invisible solar panels, vehicle to home car charging, and massive commercial grade battery storage. There is loads of new tech coming to the renewable energy space in the foreseeable future. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the amazing innovations that I think are gonna be hitting the shelf soon. But first, as usual, a coffee. So I recently went to the InterSolar event in Munich where over a thousand exhibitors showcase their products and services relating to the solar and renewables industry. There was all sorts of stuff there and a lot of it was fairly mundane but there are a few things that really shone out to me and I wanted to share some of those with you in today's video. Now, number one was the innovations when it comes to solar panels. For the last 20, 30 years, solar panels have been pretty standard, right? A rectangular frame with silicon cells and glass that generates a certain amount of energy. Now, the solar cells have been made more and more efficient over time, with solar cells around the 21% efficiency mark being fairly standard right now. However, there's some new stuff coming to market which I think you'll be interested in. Number one was invisible solar panels. Now, what do I mean? Well, these are solar panels that are not designed to go on a typical roof, but in other places. For example, we saw panels that were designed to go on the outside walls of buildings as a kind of cladding. And these panels look pretty much invisible to the naked eye, as in they just look like normal building cladding. Available in a whole plethora of different colors and textures, these panels are designed to make the building look beautiful, but also allow it to generate solar energy. And I was intrigued to see the catalog of thousands of different options that this company had. This opens up a whole new aspect of solar where rather than putting panels on the roof, a business or residence could use the outside walls of the property to generate solar energy. And I'm really excited to see some of the applications where we might see this coming to reality. In fact, let me know in the comments, what is the weirdest place you've ever seen solar panels installed? I'd love to know all your experiences down below. Now the other thing that came kind of hand in hand with that was roof-based solar, but in the design of a glass tile, a bit like the Tesla roof tiles, where rather than putting panels over the top of an existing roof, you can actually replace the roof tiles or fit a brand new roof with solar roof tiles. These are a standard size roof tile, but they have solar cells built into them and they're designed to live as long as a roof tile normally would with all the toughness that's built into it, but look almost invisible on the roof because rather than seeing a load of solar panels on the roof, you just see the normal tiles. So those innovations were something that really stood out to me at InterSolar, but there's more. As you know, at Artisan Electrics, we have been fitting bifacial solar panels more and more for our customers because they give extra possibilities when it comes to generating energy from reflected light and more power in low light situations. You might have seen our video that we did with Heatable where we showcased these bifacial panels with end phase microinverters and the results were quite outstanding. However, now at InterSolar, we can see that bifacial panels are really becoming pretty much the standard. And it seems like most manufacturers are moving away from standard white back sheet panels over to bifacial panels as pretty much standard. So that's something that is really impacting the solar world right now. And bifacial panel prices are coming down to quite similar to standard panel prices. But the other thing that was interesting for me at InterSolar was seeing the technology that's built in to the solar panels now that can help when you've got certain issues, for example, shading. We saw one demonstration where two panels were laid out side by side with the same amount of light shining on them. These panels were powering a water pump. Now the water pump would significantly reduce in power when one of the panels was shaded but the other panel, when shaded, it had very little impact. And the reason is these panels have 
clever diodes built into them that avoid shutting down multiple solar cells when one cell is shaded. This means that with a little bit of shading on one part of the panel, you don't get such a reduction in output. In fact, you get very little output. Now this raised a question for me because at Artisan Electrics, as you may know in the past, we've commonly fitted microinverters or optimizers like the solar edge optimizers in situations where there's a lot of shading and this for us has been standard practice in order to reduce the impact of shading upon the solar array and to get the maximum out of that solar array however with technology like this on the horizon the question is will optimizers and micro inverters be made redundant because the solar panels have technology within them to protect from shading I'll let you battle it out in the comments because I know that there's quite a few strong opinions on which direction we're going. Some people think that all installs are going to have optimizers and microinverters in the future and that string inverters will be made redundant and other people think otherwise. Another advancement in solar power is perovskite solar cells. Now this isn't something that I saw at InterSolar, but it is something that I heard about a few months ago on the YouTube channel Undecided with Matt Ferrell. He discussed the potential of perovskite solar cells as being more efficient and cheaper than the standard silicon solar cells. And I was intrigued to see what impact this might have in the UK. Now for the moment, these solar cells are still in production, but the results look pretty stunning. UK-based Oxford PV are at the forefront of trying to commercialise perovskite cell technology and they've achieved an amazing 26.9% efficiency in the manufacture of these cells. Their aim is to make perovskite solar cells available to everyone but at the moment they're available in very minimal quantities and it is really early days before we see whether the rollout of this technology will have a significant impact on the solar industry. But the potential benefits are huge, being more efficient and lower in cost, as well as many other benefits, perovskite solar cells could indeed change the game for rooftop solar. The other advantage of perovskite cells is apparently they're more flexible, they're easier to make and they work better in low light. However, as with any new technology that gets shouted about and people get excited about, the true test will be whether these can be manufactured at scale and in an affordable way. And usually new technology costs a lot more at the start and the prices go down as volume tends to increase. So I don't think we're gonna see anything with perovskite cells immediately on the market, but it could be something that we start to see within the next 12 months that these panels become at least available, whether or not they'll be affordable is another thing entirely. However, if you want to see a much more in-depth and educational video about all the features of perovskite cells and how they're manufactured, there'll be a link up here where you can watch Matt Farrell's video. In other updates for solar panels, we did see some huge solar panels, the biggest ones I've ever seen. And I guess these are designed for applications where you've got a big roof space or maybe even ground mount solar, where it will save time in installation having one big panel versus multiple panels. The second really interesting and exciting technology that we saw into solar was to do with bi-directional EV charging. What do I mean by that? Well, vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. Now this is something that's been talked about for years and they've been running trials in the UK. Companies like Octopus along with manufacturers like Indra have been doing limited trials to see whether vehicle to grid and vehicle to home charging is a feasible solution for people. However, there has been an issue with the number of vehicles that could be involved in the trials because to a certain point in time, only the Nissan Leaf was available to use as a bi-directional ready electric vehicle. Now technology is moving fast with new vehicles coming to the market all the time and something we're seeing now, and we saw it into solar, is the number of brands and manufacturers of battery storage systems and inverters that are starting to release a bi-directional vehicle to home electric vehicle charging point. Now the question on this is how soon will the technology be ready from a vehicle point of view. Because up until now, it seems like many vehicle manufacturers have been holding back from allowing us to use this technology, maybe for fear of cycling the battery too many times and voiding the warranty. 
but at some point the tipping moment is going to occur and with more and more manufacturers of inverters and battery systems getting on board and releasing their bi-directional ready EV chargers there must be something afoot. Now we're going to do a deep dive video all about vehicle to home and vehicle to grid and how it actually works, the technology behind it and all that's involved from an installation point of view. So make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see that video and feel free to comment below any questions that you might have about vehicle to home or vehicle to grid charging because we will try and cover as many of your questions as possible in that video. But just to give you an example at InterSolar we found that Solar Edge have got a vehicle to home charger that they're launching within the next 12 months. Sige Energy, whose battery storage systems you know we love, have already got one that's ready to go that fits into their stack of batteries and it can charge and discharge your vehicle at up to 25 kilowatts via the DC CCS charging port. So the technology is there from the installation side. Now we just wait for the vehicle manufacturers to catch up and allow this technology to be used. And then we'll see what the effects will be on the market. The third thing that we saw, which was super interesting at InterSolar was huge commercial and industrial scale battery storage systems. In the past, solar has typically been the solution for businesses where they run mostly during the day and therefore their overnight use is not so high. However, there are more and more essential businesses that are running manufacturing, running production, or loads of other use cases where battery storage systems make sense from a business point of view now. However, how many batteries do you need to run a huge business? Quite a lot. So your typical bog standard wall mounted battery storage systems just don't cut it. And for that reason, many manufacturers now are releasing containerized battery storage systems containing hundreds of kilowatt hours of battery storage, all pre-wired in a container, ready to go. It can be dropped off, plugged into the system and just work. One example of that is the system that we saw from Solar Edge, which contains 100 kilowatt hours of storage in one nice, neat enclosure with a battery inverter on the side that can just be wired straight into the existing AC systems in the building. That container has all of the batteries, the BMS, the communications technology built into it, but it also has clever things like fire suppression and a fire alarm system built in. So it's kind of a one-stop shop, a pre-made system that you can just plug and play and use to help your business to run over cheap night electricity, for example, or with some kind of backup power capabilities potentially, or mostly storing your solar energy and using it to run your property when there are peaks in usage or when the sun isn't shining. So commercial industrial scale battery storage systems was one thing that really stood out to me from this event. Now those are just three things that we've noticed that are on the horizon and I think we'll see over the next 12 months a lot of these things start to hit the headlines. For example, the vehicle to home charging system, I did see an article pop up in my Apple News feed recently about a well-known vehicle manufacturer who are releasing an AC to AC vehicle charging system that works with one of their new vehicles. So stay tuned with Artisan Electrics across all our socials if you want to hear the latest updates on all of the technology and things that are coming out because we fit these kind of products in the real world and we show you guys what they're like, what's and all in order to help you make your buying decision or if you're an installer to know what kind of cool products you can offer to your customers. I hope this video has been of interest to you. If it has and you haven't finished your coffee yet or maybe you want to grab another one why not watch one of these two videos because we think you'll really enjoy them.